Welcome back to my channel and another core reactor. This time all the questions we're looking at are about autism. The first one is, can an autistic person be highly functional and not know they have autism? Absolutely, because that's exactly what I did for four decades. And what are the differences between high functioning autism, low functioning autism, and Asperger's? What are the similarities between the three conditions? Well, Asperger's and high functioning autism are the same thing. Uh, we don't use either term anymore because Asperger was a Nazi and high and low functioning references how our autism affects other people, not how it affects us. Now we instead go with level one, two, or three autism based upon um, how much help we need. I'm level one. My symptoms are relatively mild. Uh, Someone who is nonverbal would be level three, for instance. So that's the differences. What is life like as an adult with autism? Well, since I spent <clears throat> two decades as an adult without with autism without knowing it, uh, I don't know that I could tell you the difference. I don't know what it would what it would have been different how my life would have been different if I wasn't autistic well I do to some extent uh, college would have been different um, but yeah I I really I don't know the answer to this one I don't think a person with mild autism should admit to their partner that they have a mild level of it. Um, again, this is what the question means is level one autism. And yes, if you're partners, you need to know about each other. If you're unable to share this information, you're not partners. You might, you're two people in a relationship, but you're not partners. It's as simple as that. In fact, once uh, someone hinted that I might be autistic, well, she didn't hint, she came right out and said, I think you might be autistic. Which again, thanks to my sister for doing that. But I suspect my wife probably accepted it before I did. <laughs> what is it like for autistic people to mask their autism from others? How does it work? Well, it works by us exerting a completely absurd amount of energy just trying to appear normal. Um, you know, trying to make it look like I'm looking people in the eyes even when I'm not. I'm not even looking at their faces at all. I have these long pauses in my speech sometimes. I... blurt thing, the wrong things at times. I tr I have worked very hard to learn to read a room, but I still completely fail at it sometimes. One of the most visible things, though, once I stopped masking, is I don't wear pants. I have always hated having my joints restricted in any way. But I put up with pants and shorts because I thought I had to. Now that I'm 47 and done with masking, I wear kilts in the winter and skirts in the summer because my kilts are too hot for summer. And I have never been more comfortable, both temperature-wise and emotionally, when out, in a, out with people than I am in a skirt. I am a, I'm a cishet man. You know, I'm completely straight, but I still wear skirts because they're comfortable and because you're certain Western countries are the only ones who think that 
dresses and skirts or women's clothing. Go to the Caribbean or the Middle East or pretty much anywhere else in the world. And both sexes wear skirts and or dresses. It's just normal for everybody except an American. Would you have a gay or autistic son? Why wouldn't I? Why would... I don't understand why this is a question. And, for, and I also don't understand the question. Is he saying, you know, if you had to pick, would you prefer a gay or autistic son? Or is it just saying, would your child being gay or autistic be bad? Either way, I don't care. People are who they are. You can't hold against people things that they can't control. It's as simple as that. If you are, that makes you an asshole. <laughs> Do all autistic people have a constant dialogue in their heads? Yeah, and this is the the usual response to this question. Is, wait, you mean there are people that don't have a constant dialogue going in their heads? Like, there's just silence? I can't fathom such a thing. I can't either. The only time there's no dialogue running in my head is when I'm asleep. <laughs> this is uh, Anna Tuma. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm also a writer. So is my wife. So she also has the running dialogue. But she's not autistic. So, yeah. I, I really don't understand this. Um, this being a question. Because I can't imagine silence in my head. What are the subtle signs? Well, a key one that really should have told me decades earlier is inability to maintain eye contact. The long pauses in speech like that, uh, or a stutter. Uh, I come across as extremely introverted because I just, I don't initiate conversations, especially with people I don't know well. Um... Uh, Hating phone calls, yep. I uh, I almost never answer my phone. Not replying to text messages, yep, I do that. Hating seams and tags in your clothing, yep. Having a weird sense of humor, very much. Always telling the truth, yep. I used to think it was because of my moral convictions, but no, it's just because I'm... I can't read people, so I can't lie, because lying requires the ability to interpret and present body language and expressions, and I just, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> An aversion to or obsession with pop culture. Yep. For most of my life, if I, something was popular, I seemed it was stupid. That's why it was so hard for my wife and my niece to talk me into watching Harry Potter, but once I watched the first movie, I went and devoured the books. <laughs> Always feeling tired. Yep. Don't like being told what to do. More precisely, don't like being told how to do. You know, request me doing something, and, wow, this is a really long answer, and I will do it to the best of my ability. But don't tell me I'm doing it wrong or, or anything like that. Um, if I'm not actually doing it wrong. If you, you know, I'm just, I'm not doing it your way. That doesn't mean I'm doing it wrong. That just means I'm not doing it your way. Would you choose to be diagnosed as an adult? Yes, I would. Uh, because I live in North Carolina, it probably wouldn't affect my disability in any way. But it might. And it would be nice to have the, you know, official diagnosis to tell people who doubt that I'm autistic. But no one who knows me doubts that I'm autistic. Because <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Can you describe autism in a way that can be easily understood by non-autistic people? Here's the way I'd like to describe it. To an outsider, it's a social thing. But to an actual autist, it's sensory. Our senses are just 
weird. Um, in my case, certain tastes like salty, hot, uh, bitter, sweet will completely dominate other flavors and things so that I can't taste them at all. Like most coffee to me just tastes like bitterness. Um, spicy food just tastes like burning to quote the great philosopher uh, Wiggum. Um, my hearing, I my entire life I've struggled to make out the lyrics in songs which as a musician, as you can imagine, is quite frustrating. And yet, things like capac capacitors charging, um, the sound of fingernail clippers actually causes me physical pain. There's all these things that sounds that either annoy me or hurt me, and yet there's other sounds that I should be able to hear that I can't. I now have hearing aids that balance all that out so I can actually hear better. Likewise, my vision is not great, but my eyes are highly photophobic. And it's all the same kind of thing. My, my brain can't help taking in everything going on around me, but it doesn't know what's important and what's not, and it gets things mixed up. That's, uh, okay, complicated and rambly, but that's me. But that, so... Yeah, in short, for me at least, it's that my senses are haywire. And I get overloaded, and sometimes I shut down, I withdraw because I just can't take any more stimulation. Other times, I need stimulation as a way to focus in order to ignore chaos around me. If you've been diagnosed, do you ever mention it up front? And talking with other people, why or why not? Okay, I, I'm not diagnosed yet. Um, but yes, I do mention it. Um, in fact, the people I've just started playing Magic with a couple of months ago are probably tired of me hear, hearing me say, you know, I'm autistic, so... Or just talking about my autism, but... I haven't had friends since the COVID lockdown. So that's part of it, is I've just got all this pent up wanting to talk to people. But... Also, sometimes it's just important that people know things. Like, I'm never going to look you in the eyes, but it's not because I'm cheating at, cheating at magic. It's because I can't look people in the eyes. So, yes, it's important. Oh, this is the one I just had. People on the autism spectrum... How did you meet your spouse? Now, this one is kind of interesting. Um, my uh, undiagnosed autism caused me to, because I wouldn't talk to my counselor or whatever the term was in college, advisor. Uh, I ended up needing an extra year of community college. Uh, because of that, I started at university during my wife's senior year of high school. And so we met the following year and started dating a year after that. And that was... November of 99 so 24 years ago and um, I haven't wanted to be more than a few feet from her ever since so in my case my autism is responsible for me meeting her but it's also responsible for how hard it was for her to make me realize that <laughs> there was might be something between us uh, it doesn't help either that I'm demisexual. So she could try to flash in cleavage to get my attention and it would just make me uncomfortable and withdrawn. Now I literally write poems about how great her boobs are. But that's the difference between
being in love and not. So, yeah, more specifically, where we met was at the Baptist Student Union in Raleigh. And it's always in, it amused me that, you know, here we are 80, living 80 miles apart on the western end of North Carolina. And so we meet on the eastern end. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, if not for the Baptist Student Unions, we wouldn't be together. If not for my autism, we wouldn't be together. So, even though I've since parted ways with my faith, and the Baptist Student Unions no longer exist anyway, I will still forever be grateful for my former religion because it helped bring me my wife. So, that's how I met my spouse. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I will see you next time.